Sheet metal was my livelihood, but I never thought I'd be building gear like this. Every week, we turn tons of steel into rolling works of art. Some of the toughest gear in the world comes out of this factory. Building this gear is only half the fun. No one tests like we do. My passion has taken my family to the edges of the earth. Life's a game. We know how to play it. Patriot Games. Coming up over the ridge line, I can see a puffing chimney. I can see a patch of ice out in the distance and I can see a herd of reindeers. And it's just it, just goosebumps. Goosebumps are just flowing right through my body. It's this sense of achievement, this feeling that just overcomes you. That you've you've conquered your own little you, you've conquered your own little expedition. As soon as I came over and saw the teepees, the smoke coming out the top, and the reindeers, I knew we had made that destination. I couldn't get down there quick enough. It's a truly unique experience to come up into the mountains and meet people like this. They live a very different life to the way we live back at home. What an experience riding in. Seriously, it was something like out of a movie. Something you see on National Geographic. Riding in, seeing ice patches on the left-hand side, crossing a riverbed, and then seeing the deers, and more than anything else, seeing the teepees. It was sensational. Hello. Okay. Hello. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Hello. How are you doing, Justin? Hello. <laughs> cool. He looks like he's been working. The experience for the kids to see how the rest of the world lives in, in all the different situations from the traveling around Australia, the traveling into the United States, and now the traveling into uh, Mongolia, the, the stark contrast between all the different cultures that these kids have been introduced to. To get the kids embedded in these sorts of cultures is experiences that they're, they're not gonna learn at school. They're, they can't read this in a book. They can't touch it. They can't feel it. They can't smell it. And they'll remember this for the rest of their lives. After a three-day journey on horseback, the team have finally arrived in northern central Mongolia. It's a very different lifestyle to what we're used to back home. And this family of nomadic reindeer herders have lived this way for generations. Roaming with their reindeer herds, hunting to supplement their diet, which is mostly reindeer milk, and living in teepees all year round. The Dhaka people move their communities every seven to 10 weeks, and this family is one of only a few left of its kind. These nomadic herders base all aspects of their lives around their reindeer, depending on them for nearly all aspects of survival, as well as cultural and spiritual identity. Mia. Yo. Mia, look. Do you want to ride a reindeer? Oh, wow. Yeah. First time seeing the reindeer, so, you know, um, the instinct kicked in. I was like thinking to my head, like, what if they're like running, you know, freely in the wild? You know, maybe just like go hunting like for them, yeah? But um, seeing like up close and then seeing the calves and everything made me like realize that we need to care for them because there are only about 2,000 of them. So we need to um, preserve them and, um, and save them. Oh, look, there's a baby. Yeah, there is a baby. I didn't even see him. Now, now I know why Santa uses them. Look at them. <laughs> Look at them. I've never seen a reindeer before. It's amazing to see them in their natural terrain. So being a father of myself, um, you know, like seeing Justin and like Mia together and then going up to the reindeer and, you know, like just like that interaction, that like um, the very close interaction, like made me miss my family very much. And, uh, you know, like the next time I'm gonna come up here, with my family and, you know, like have that um, closeness. Oh my God. Oh. Hey. 
Hey, all good. You might, if he swung his head around. Yeah. Whoa. Hey, buddy. We're not buddy. symmetrical, are they? Yeah. 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 Gave him a rub. Look at the wall. Yeah, see? He's nervous yeah. of us, I think. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Wait, they're so soft. They're really soft, huh? That is not what I expected. They know, I, they, I find that really weird that they know when you're touching them. They must feel the vibration down at the base. Okay, you ready? Yeah. You're gonna have a ride? One, oh, two, no. three. No. There you go. Okay, good. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> watch your head. Is, he can't, he can't, gonna hit he me can't go face. back that far. Dad. Just hold on. Dad. Darling, oh. hold on. <laughs> Darling, I got you. I got you. It's all good. All good. Come on. You're right in the rain there. Antler's going to hit me in the face. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Mia's had a rough couple of days, you know. She wasn't very confident on the horses, but like true Mia fashion, she just battled through. She's, you know, she's got a dad here with her. She's got nothing to worry about. But to see her eyes light up, it's, it's like they literally doubled in size and they were the bluest blue that I've seen in such a long time, you're gonna make me cry. Nope, nope. You are gonna make me cry. <laughs> okay, I'm good. <laughs> Whoa. I love you. I love you. <laughs> can, I, can I have someone else here? I don't want to talk about Mia anymore. <laughs> you are going to make me cry. <laughs> the boys, they're naturals at everything. Put them on anything and they do an awesome job. Oh, no, Christian, Go. he got on that reindeer like he owned it. So I'm in Mongolia, sitting on top of a reindeer, taking him for a ride. This is absolutely amazing. Yeah, this is my first time up here. Look at the saddlebags. Oh, check it out, yeah. Saddlebags. In, in, you near, Sven. In tunnels. Reindeer. That is reindeer, brother. Yeah. Check that out, yeah. Coming over here and then checking out like how the reindeer people live. Uh, even for me, uh, I got a shock, yeah? Because like, they live to the bare minimum. Like, they, they don't have much. Uh, and then even the TPs, they don't, they don't put like, um, um, insulation around it like during the winter time and then like when I got here and I asked them like uh, well, how, like how do they work out during the winter time and then the, the guy said like they only fire it up during the morning and then during the night time that's it yeah during the daytime they don't do anything man right now is just showing us how he loads up his reindeers um, before he moves and also I think we're about to see how his son rides it <laughs> oh my god, that is scary. Oh, buddy. Oh, good. This way. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> this thing's loose. I'm actually riding a reindeer. <laughs> this is insane. I don't know. I don't I don't even know what to say. Oh, I am riding a reindeer. <laughs> you, you believe this? You go this way? inside the teepee um, just helping cook lunch. We're making some noodles, uh, noodle soup I think it is with lamb. So um, Tamir says it's gonna be really tasty. With lunch simmering away, Ashton, Christian and Mia take off to explore the Mongolian countryside. You guys are really at home here already, aren't you? Ross, how do we get this thing down? Question. You can one, throw six up, up there, we'll shank the him down, or two, climb, climb up the tree. tree. <laughs> <Go>. <laughs> Ashton's currently trying to climb up the tree, seeing if we can get some pine nuts. If we can, great. If we can't, well, there's no can't. 
Hey, yeah, we have a couple. That's Why? good. Whoa, that's great. Oh, man. Oh. In that hole. Yeah. There, Christian. Right. Oh, I got sap all over me. Christian. Christian, come here. Chill out. Okay. So, how many do you have? I've got three. I have seven. Guys, I'm hurting. I'm three plus seven, Christian. Out. What? I came in like a wrecking ball. Okay guys, let's all grab these plants, go down and give them to the reindeer people so they can cook them or do whatever they do with them. You know? Let's do it. Okay. Noodle soup for lunch. No comment. I know. These are the noodles that Sarah was making earlier. Ah, uh, I didn't come with it. Ow. Oh, yum. Oh, that's really hot, but really good. Oh, really hot. Mm. Fresh made noodles that Sarah made before. Lamb in it, like a, just a really simple sort of stew. Uh, obviously sitting inside the teepee um, with the furnace going, it's nice and warm in here. Everyone's getting hot food until it's, it's, it's cool. Very cool. might sound like a bit of a cliche, but last night I, I literally felt like a kid on Christmas. I couldn't help myself this morning. I've got up on my own this morning, everybody's still asleep. The sun's just starting to, to come up, a little bit of light. I thought I'd come out here and spend a little bit of time on my own, obviously with the reindeer and kind of just absorb what's going on. I'll, I'll get inside the tent, I'll, I'll wake the family up, and um, as the sun comes up, we'll get the kids with their last final experience up here with the reindeer before we set off back down the mountain. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Usually, right now, the team would wake themselves up with some coffee. But if they want their morning fix, they're going to have to roll up their sleeves. All right. The reindeer people milk the reindeers daily. This is a life source for them. They use it in everything. So um, it was really, really fun for me and Mia to be able to, to participate in something, you know, so traditional that they do. Trying. Oh, there we go. Your milk? I got one. That's cool. Oh, there, see? Oh. Well done. <laughs> So we got the girls out this morning uh, to milk the reindeer. Now they're milking the reindeer every single day. They produce about 200 mil of milk, they were telling us, every day of the year, and, and obviously that's their milk source. It's a woman only job up here. The men, are, uh, they don't do it. And it's, it's obviously not a sexist thing. It's just part of the tradition. The men have their roles uh, at the camp and the women have their roles at the camp too. But to, to see this is, this is how they live. This is part of how they harvest from this land. And it's another um, another really good insight into how the traditional Mongolian nomads live up in these mountains. Oh, oh, I just got a you. Milking the reindeer was kind of strange and it was pretty difficult. I'm really glad I did it. Not many people can say that they milked a reindeer. Me has been asking since she arrived if she could go down and see the ice. We saw a small patch of ice when we came in and I really wanted to go see it. Rob and I left the kids for a moment on their own just to see what they would get up to. You know, they're throwing snowballs, you could see some snowmen getting made and they had a blast. Uh, we couldn't leave it just to them, we had to get over there and see what was going on. To be honest, I'm a little bit jealous. These Mongolians living out here, they got running water, nice teepees, just living off the land. It's really, really amazing. Look, this trip's been such a great experience. Um, not only for myself, but to be, to spend time with my grandchildren and to see them being so well educated. 
by learning something that you can't learn in a textbook. The experience of different cultures, different lifestyles, different traditions, different people. And I think they're taking it all on board and they're learning without even knowing it. It's been oh, yeah. <laughs> When mum came over, it was on. The yellow side. <laughs> Maya, how are you? It's oh, again, it's like it just doesn't want to hit you. <laughs> 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 I feel like a kid, like I always do when snow or ice is involved. I'm skiing around like an absolute idiot on this tiny patch of ice. But you know what? It was nice to unwind in the afternoon. Mother totally love. That's cool, eh? We should uh, gather some of the guys over there. Yeah. Because they got some gifts for What, for, for us? us? Yeah. For the day? Yeah. Yeah, okay. How cool is that, huh? Cool. Right? Cool. Come here. Yeah. Yeah. That is mine. Wow. His um, oldest son is making like all of this. Carves all of them. Yeah. Which the son that we met yesterday? Yeah. The older one. The older one? Yeah. Amazing. We're about to depart from the reindeer people, and um, Tamir has taken us over, and they've got gifts for us. Um, looking at all of this amazing stuff, we get to take it home and we'll always remember this trip like we could forget it, but um, it's absolutely amazing. Just like the, these are the ones that you can't find in the black market, yeah? Well, you, can't. No, you can't. No way, man. Like, <laughs> legit stuff. All right, to me, yep. um, can we say thank you? You're still great, Good job. Thank you. How do you say thank you? Baisla. Baisla. Yeah. Well, he's so happy that you guys thank came. You. Thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. like, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you too. Mm -hmm. And you have a beautiful country and beautiful family. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I think it's time for us to go, but Maybe one day we'll be back. Yeah. Maybe. Here, champ. Here's one for you. Let's get. Let's get. Let's get this on. Let's get this on you. Yeah? Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. You're looking good. I can't believe uh, what has just happened. I'm. I'm absolutely. I'm gobsmacked. Um, wow, Justin. We're gonna do it. Really? Yeah. Thank you. Thank. Come here. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've been eyeing this off for days and we've just been, I've been given this as our final gift and this is amazing. As we were leaving, he's handed me his axe and it's his, his own personal tool. It's like, it's literally like taking the shirt off your back and giving it to a complete stranger. That, that's that's the, the, the only way that I can look at it. You want it the second we got here, we got here. <laughs> checking it out. And then uh, after that, and, I, and I, I still can't understand the reason why. I don't, I don't understand why out of the people that visit here, you know, he took his belt off with his own handmade knife. These are the two personal items. These people here have nothing. They have absolutely nothing. And I asked Tamir, I turned to Tamir straight away and I said, mate, I, you know, like I can't accept that. And Tamir's like, you have to accept it. Everything is um, made by himself. You, he actually made, he made this one. Yeah. Sure. Dude, that is amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll, I'll wear this for the rest of the trip. Mm. We put it on. The guy, he gave one of his, like two of his personal items to Justin. I mean, that is personal. That is really, really like touching personal stuff, yeah? Oh, babe. 
That is. He had another axe there, so I, I feel a little bit more. Um, I feel more comfortable knowing that fact. And then in return, um, the the best thing I could do is I took my boots off, uh, the boots that I, I bought at the black market a few days ago, and handed them over to him. And I could see the smile on his face. And look, at a, a deal, any type of deal, is it, it only works if both people feel like they've won. And I could see the look on his face that. He felt like he'd won and, and, and I know I'd won as well so it was the perfect trade for the pair of us and, and that's something I'm going to treasure and something I'll keep. Okay? Alright guys, um, so that's it, that wraps up our time here with the reindeer people with a nomadic family here in Mongolia. Uh, this is one that's going to go down in the history books. Now it's time to get back down that valley and on to our next adventure here in Mongolia. Well, this is one journey the crew won't ever forget. And on the ride home, it looks like Mia might just surprise us all yet. That and you're riding. And would you look at that? We're so proud of you, Mia. Mia's actually, um, she's conquered her fears. She's having a little ride, which is awesome. So just on the flat bits, I think I'll take control when we get back to the steep stuff. But how you going back there, girl? You going good? Yeah. You're looking good. It feels really different not being wet. Now I feel like I'm in control. Perfect. This is really easy. I don't know what I was worried about. I'm controlling the horse, I'm leading the pack, I'm out in front of the boys. This is awesome. It's pretty crazy how um, a little bit of time can conquer a fear uh, for a child. You know, Mia, she did not want to get on those horses, she didn't want to ride them, she didn't want to be pulled, you know, from tears to absolute excitement. Um, I'm so proud of her and I'm so wrapped that she really took this on board, eh? Next time on Patriot Games. The crew are back on the road, overlanding through the ever-changing landscape of the Mongolian countryside. And the kids run into another dose of incredible culture as the team comes to an unexpected stop.